Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the Atheron Roundhouse GP38-2 DCC locomotive. Many of the comments that I see regarding model railroading are involving the price. And I understand a lot of these locomotives, a lot of anything, really costs a lot of money. And the reason for that is simple. It costs a lot of money to produce the locomotives and the structures and everything else. So here we have an Atherton Roundhouse unit which is Atherton's more economical line. Many of your manufacturers will offer an economical line so you don't have to pay two to three hundred dollars or more for a locomotive. These locomotives right here came in at about hundred and thirty dollars each. Now I get it, hundred and thirty dollars is still hundred and thirty dollars. But these two locomotives here cost the same as this single locomotive here. So what's my point? So yes, that $250 plus dollar locomotive has DCC and sound, nice lighting effects, a lot of separately applied detail parts. Okay, we get that, and it costs a lot to make that. So these locomotives here, they're DCC, they're still very nice. They do not have sound, and many of the parts are molded in. But still, the paint is very crisp. The handrails are very nice. Thin profile, very straight and sturdy. Still a great locomotive. But again, $130 is still $130. But don't worry. There are locomotives out there, in fact I have some of my own here, that were under $50 DCC. They may not have all the great detail, but they still look good, they still run fine, so you don't have to break the bank to enjoy the hobby. Now these locomotives I picked up suddenly because they became available out of nowhere. So it might have been something that was pulled off of a back shelf. I don't know. But what I'm getting at is, I don't know how many other road names are currently available or were available in or for the GP38-2 from Atherton Roundhouse. They were available in both DC and DCC. And the DC models are around $100. Here's the end of one of the boxes, if I can get it down in there for you to see, there it is, come into focus for us, come on, there we go. So again, most of the parts on these models are molded in, so there's no separately applied uh, grab irons or lift rings. No MU hoses, there's no snow plows on these units, but it doesn't matter. They're still excellent models. Okay, if you're looking for the high end detail, go ahead. You're going to pay a little bit more, but still, great models. The couplers, I notice, are a hair high on these. You can always replace those with offset couplers if that becomes a problem. I only had an issue with it uncoupling from one car, but that car had a low coupler, so overall they should be fine. The motors on these models are a little bit louder than the higher end, and in Atherton's case, the higher end is Atherton Genesis, 
there are the motors in the Genesis run is or line is a little bit quieter but still that's fine pulling power I haven't actually ran them separately I bought them together because again they came unexpectedly available but and I haven't pulled a very long train with them together but I'm guesstimating by their weight that they're gonna pull up at least 20 cars on their own just fine if your layout has a grade or hills it might pull a little less but if you pair them up like this you'll obviously be able to pull well over 20 30 cars no problem so again no sound the only lighting effect is a headlight no beacon there is a tail light as well for when it's in reverse okay I'm gonna take a moment to talk about programming these locomotives into the DCC command station so by default I model not model I program my locomotives to their four-digit cab number or three-digit cab number but in this case I couldn't get the locomotives to program or I couldn't get the DCC Digitrax Zephyr to program in the four-digit address now I don't know if this is unique to the Digitrax Zephyr or Digitrax equipment period the decoders in these locomotives are NCE when I tried programming them I tried all your different methods I tried them directly on a programming track I tried programming on the main I tried the different Digitrax functions for programming direct paging ops none of it would work trying to program it with a four-digit address so I ended up trying it with two digit and that worked it worked fine right on the programming track now I have run into this with some other manufacturers most notably MTH I cannot program four digit cab numbers with MTH they're all two digit but you know what it's fine I got them programmed they work I just have to keep a mental note or write down somewhere that hey these locomotives are only two numbers and these are the numbers as opposed to trying to look up the four digit numbers like 3865 or 3868 instead these two are simply programmed to 65 and 68 and that's it so just a note if you run into an issue where you're pro programming your locomotive and it just won't take the address try two digit it seems to work well that's about it for this little overview I'm not it's not really an in-depth review like some of my other locomotives just to kind of give you an idea that there are options out there that are less expensive to get you into the hobby or keep you into the hobby I know things are expensive but they cost a lot to make and ship so and that goes true with anything any hobby really so I'm gonna close this video out with running these locomotives around a little bit with a short train and until next time folks Happy model railroading. Take care.